Welcome to the Arc Reactors. I'm John. I'm Greg. And we are deep into the race, finished with episode 10, done with Sweden, and also done with our streak, unfortunately. Second place isn't too shabby, but I know we have some new kings of crown, new kings of crown. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to Jordan Garrett. They killed it. They did. They, 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 they killed did it. Crown. They killed it. So let's get right into it. We are hitting the town. Uh, but it's going to take a while to get there. We rip our clue. We're in Leblania. But we find out we're going to Stockholm, which is awesome. I've been with our mom before. And we end up having to take a four-hour bus to Vienna to actually fly to Stockholm. So all the teams are kind of chilling on this bus. Except for Todd and Ashley. They were on a separate bus, actually. But it was a cool time to just, like, chat with teams. Yeah. It was yeah, cool I forgot they were on a separate bus. <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm. we did get to chat with teams. Man, I don't know how... Yeah, I don't know how production does this with the whole... Because there were very specific times where we needed to, um, you know, fly from one country to another, but there weren't flights for like that specific country to that other specific yeah. country. So yeah, weird little times where we needed to take a long bus. But it was nice because yeah. a lot of times we can't really talk. We can talk during the race, but we're obviously focused. So we don't have that much time to talk. And when we're in our hotel rooms, we're in our hotel rooms. So we don't have that much time to just chill, chat with people, unless we're at the airport, which again, we're still kind of moving a lot. So yeah. this was a good time to just just catch up. It was good, yeah. I heard like what people's first cars were, like about relationships. It was nice. I had to pee like the Dickens, and we were kind of cutting it close though. Like the other teams would not want to stop the bus because I had to pee. I ended up having to pee in a bottle. That's how like competitive these teams were. They weren't risking it at all. But we made it um, with just enough time to spare, and then yeah, got ourselves to Sweden, which was like nice and like rainy and chilly but we had looked up in the airport like you saw with todd and ashley that we were going to go skydiving and at least that was our guess because it was a skydiving facility but i think we were both pretty psyched even though you had like a fear of heights kind of coming in <laughs> i did have a fear of heights i just it wasn't as strong as i thought apparently my love for winning is greater than my fear of heights because i would have done anything at that time i remember when we found out we were going skydiving I wasn't all that scared. I think my brain was also like, and I think my brain also told myself, okay, maybe it's not skydiving or maybe Johnny can just go skydiving. Something where I didn't have to do it. So until they told us we were skydiving, my brain tried to trick me into maybe not thinking we were doing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ashley was shaking in her boots a little bit, but she did it. Props to her. Like, I think it's always rewarding to see people on the race who have these fears of heights and, and make that leap. It's it's always emotional for me to watch back. And I'm sure it was yeah. her too. I think last season it was Claire. There was someone who was bald. Oh yeah, it was Claire. It was Claire. And that tightrope across that bridge. Ugh. Balling. Ugh, yeah. I feel it. Yeah. yeah. Take me I, back. I thought yeah. that was going to be me, but apparently not. Like, I, I think I like heights now. I, <laughs> I think that like it went from not liking heights to, okay, oh, you know, I kind of want to do that again. That's what it's all about, discovering those new new things that you like. So, sure. But it took us a while to get to skydiving because we ended up getting... I didn't know we were the first taxi to get there, honestly. I think we just started jetting so quickly that I thought Steve and Anna Lee and um, Joel and Garrett had been there before us. But we went right past that gate, mostly because I think we're both looking for something that's like red and white, red and yellow, a typical clue box, like we pulled on literally leg one, roadblock one. For the road for the roadblock numbers, but that was deceptive as heck. I and looking back on it, when we ran past it, not even a ounce of maybe that's it. It was well because we also thought that we saw it. And we pulled up, we pulled up to the airfield, mm -hmm. and I yep. think one of us pointed out. We had said, "Okay, I see the clue box down by the airplane." So our eyes were yep. set down there, no matter what. It'd be one thing if we came out and we're yep. like, "Okay, now we have to look," but we were kind of dead set on going over there anyway. Wouldn't change a thing. For sure. Wouldn't well, change yeah. It wouldn't change a thing. Why do we feel like we need to run everywhere all the time? Like, we we didn't see any other teams. What's like, go, 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 all the time. It's like, it, it can really hurt you versus help you. It really can. And we've been, uh, we've been playing a pretty calm game as it, like, not making too many mistakes. This wasn't our biggest mistake, but it was our most obvious mistake. It was the mistake that we... Yeah just we're going way too fast which which did we, really get, did we get a dun, 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 during that scene you know we did you we did know okay we did. i don't even i don't even remember hearing it i think they're just like 
just try to ignore that part of the, the, uh, <laughs> the episode. Um, yeah, it, it, so we got it. And yeah, it makes sense. Joel and Garrett weren't going to tell us. Totally respect that. Um, and honestly, like we were kind of thinking like, should we tell Rob and Corey where it is? Because like if we tell them and they have the express pass and that pushes Todd and Ashley further back versus if Rob and Corey go fifth, they're just going to catch back up to the top four. So there was kind of that debate going on too. Yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah. yeah Todd Rob and Corey ended up pulling back. Yeah, they ended up pulling five. Which was, yeah, which was fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, again, it all worked out. But yeah, that would have been kind of a good move. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Probably a good move. Yeah. And we ended up doing some cabin sleeping. Was not expecting that. It was like probably the most rough and tumble sleeping outside of like a plane or airport that we had to do. And yeah, I got some sleeping bags, which also had numbers that looked like the ones that we had pulled. And only slept for like two hours. The sun never actually set, which is kind of crazy. And also comforting in a way for me. I don't know why. Yeah, not having the sunset. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. Was, it was bright the entire time. I, I didn't really get that much sleep that night. One, because I knew we were skydiving the next night. And also, they had a uh-huh. whole feast lined up for us. It was the only time in the race where they actually fed us during a leg. And they had these Swedish meatballs that were to die for. That's oh. still one of my favorite meals uh-huh. that we've had on the race. Not ever, but definitely close to it. And I had like six of those yeah. fat meatballs. So my stomach was my stomach was screaming at me that night, but it was it was delicious. Dang. It was so much fun. Dang, I feel like those meatballs would have also like knocked you out cold. At least that's what would have happened to me. But I remember I remember this now. I remember your stomach kind of turning. It was also kind of cold. That sleeping bag was not doing enough good, and also like it was raining. Oh, it was raining, and so not only was it cold, and so everything stayed damp, but also we had you know been in the camp cabin for like two hours. So there was no time for anything to dry up. So I remember just like waking up with cold feet and having to put on some damp, cold socks. That was unpleasant. And end of the day, I showed you my wrinkles on my feet. Remember, like we yeah we yeah. checked into the mat. Ah, uh, it's <laughs> yeah. just race yeah. things, race things. Your feet were, your feet were absolutely <laughs> raised. And those, those skydivers, they wake up early because we had to wake up at, I think we went to bed. Well, we got to the airfield at like midnight. We went to bed at maybe two yeah. and we had to be ready by 4 a.m. They were they were up and ready by 4 a.m. And we were scared, too, because since it was raining, they might have canceled it because if it's cloudy, they can't go skydiving. And so the entire night before, we were just praying that it – well, some people praying that it did get canceled. Some people were praying that it didn't get canceled. But we were praying uh-huh. that it didn't get canceled because we, really we really wanted to do it. Um, and so, but yeah, when we woke up the next morning – it still was pretty cloudy, but since we found out that we were flying, we didn't know where we were flying to, where we were dropping off. When we found mm-hmm. out that we were skydiving over Stockholm, they said that it was clear skies over the, where that was. So the weather gods really helped us out that day. Yeah, Bertram, the founder of the show, was saying he always gets lucky with this type of stuff weather-wise. Whenever there's something weather-dependent, like the moment he needs it, it, it turns out well. So we got some of his luck. And production takes our stuff. We leave it next to the plane, and then... When we get to Stockholm, they have it right there. So that was a nice little uh, door-to-door service that they provided. <laughs> but we got in that plane, and and we did that. We did that. We Lots did. of fun. Uh, and Gravy's first time. It was my first time. I was supposed to go skydiving before the race, but because of weather, it got canceled. So this is my first time skydiving. And, I mean, I loved it. I was nervous going up just because, you know, not that I'm worried something's going to happen, but there is that off chance that something can happen. But I asked my instructor, I was like, okay, well, how many times have you done this? And I forgot the number. It was some astronomical number. I think he said 8,000 times or maybe 10,000 times. I don't know. I remember it being 50,000 times for I some reason. I think it was, but, dude. I, didn't, I thought I was yeah. being dramatic with 50,000, but I think it is 50,000 times, which is an insane number. Really maybe he was, <laughs> Maybe he was just exaggerating. <laughs> and we took it literally. <laughs> Yeah, it was like a million times. We're like, a million uh, times? But it, it did calm me down because I was like, okay, the odds are ever in our favor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. we should be good. It was so much fun. Um, beautiful. Like the, the drop itself is great, but it's when that parachute hits and you're able to just like look over the horizon. And again, you, you guys saw we started this at like 5 a.m. on the rip. So it was nice and early, really scenic. Thank you, really? That's all we got to say about that. Yeah. 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 I mean, what an entrance. 
like flying over it. I do remember mm -hmm. not being too, too nervous going up. Like the plane, plane ride was nice. And then, well, first of all, we were flying at maybe like a thousand feet for most of the trip, a uh, trip over to Stockholm. And I was like, oh, this is mm -hmm. not that high. Like we'll be fine. And then at the yeah. very end, we jumped up to like 10,000 feet. Just start and... climbing, climbing. Yeah. Yeah. And then as soon as whoever went first, Joel, Joel and Garrett, after they jumped is when I was like, oh, we're about to do this thing like just seeing their bodies just drop out of the plane uh, uh -huh. that was and their screams just dissipate just <sighs> <sighs> yeah. insane but it was so much it was a thrill that was my other than the carnival that was probably my second favorite part of the race cool wow carnival staying strong <laughs> I, I think I agree with you I think I agree with you <laughs> So we ended up hitting the, the ground. It was maybe like if 10 minutes between some of the jumps. I feel like Joel and Garrett and Stephen and Lee were closer together. And then it was like a little more time. And then us and then uh, Rob and Corey and then a little more time. I, I don't fully remember. But we ended up kind of just landing our butts on the ground in the grass, ripping our next clue, saying we needed to take a boat. And we saw Joel and Garrett having just kind of gotten their directions and it looked like a pretty straight line. You just hug the water. So we kind of just ran it, ran it as a pack there. There's a shot of Gregory and I going across a bridge that was us going the wrong way. We saw a sign that we thought was a race flag, but we do make mistakes. And then we ended up getting on a boat to take us to uh, another area where we were going to have the roadblock. But it was pretty cool, like just dropping from a plane and then getting on this like chartered speedboat. It felt very like James Bond-like and something that is like typical race. Yeah, and it was cool too, it, it, what even more James Bond, like as we were on the boat, Bertram flies around in a helicopter and they have like cameras yeah. on the helicopter. And so seeing Bertram kind of fly around with like as, after us just coming after a plane and we were on a like speed boat and Bertram was up there with a the helicopter flying around, we got drones all over us. It felt, it felt really cool. And it was nice too, kind yeah. of like how in um, Slovenia where we just had a boat, I think you said where we can just kind of let someone else do the work for a little bit. Those mm -hmm. little, between times are nice. You just get to take in the views. Yep, just take in the views. So we end up hitting this archipelago, and it's who likes to party? Gregory likes to party in general, but also he needed to do the roadblock <laughs> to like even it out functionally. So uh, it served two functions, and I I think we both seen Midsummer, so that was like our first thought coming into it. But it wasn't it had nothing to do with the movie. But I still only think of the movie every time I think about this challenge. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how Sweden feels about that movie because they really put a damper on. Because Midsummer, the whole festival, I mean, as you saw, I was having a blast. Oh, well, after I finished, mm -hmm. the I was having a blast. Well, I was having a blast during the challenge too. But yeah, it's a fun festival. People are dancing, flowers all around, good music, people singing. But all I could think about was that terrifying movie. So that A24 really put a damper on it. You did, you did really well. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, Annalie, Annalie knew what she was doing because I thought that the flowers had, I was being so particular, I thought the flowers had to be in very particular places, but it turns out mm -hmm. you just needed the right amount of flowers on each one. I think Annalie knew that, or she got lucky with the numbers, but she, she killed it. I do remember my heart dropping a little bit when Rob and Corey came up and they said, mm -hmm. we're going to use the Express Pass, because then it was down to four teams. It was almost like someone just got eliminated. It was, okay, now, yeah. now we're racing for four four teams but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah once once i finished and not seeing todd and ashley was also pretty calming so mm -hmm. yeah thanks thanks i did do did, did all right did all right yeah definitely yeah i i wonder if robin Corey even like read the challenge yeah like, thoroughly but as in they they read who likes the party i wonder if they even considered like is this something or if they came in they were like we're fifth we're using this express pass we're not even reading the paper what if the paper had said like literally just dance in a circle and then go to your next thing like you never know. <laughs> no, they definitely read it because they saw it was a roadblock and they said, okay, we're better as a team rather than one person doing it individually. But they I saw it was a roadblock. Did they even read the roadblock clue? That's the right. Thing. And I don't think it mattered what the clue was. Like, I, I, I agreed with their logic where it's a roadblock. They'd rather do detours. Just get rid of it. Like, no matter what the roadblock is, just go back to the detour. But I, I mean, I don't know. It, I, I don't know if they used it correctly or not, but they, they couldn't have known that the challenge wouldn't have taken that long. So yeah. it's a tough, it's a tough call. Yeah, you don't know, but you you got us out of there uh, after after in Lee. We're back on our boats. We get back to like the Stockholm area. We find the theater without even needing Google Maps. It's like kind of right there, and we find the violinist not too much trouble. Um, I definitely thought it was going to be a challenge in there, 
Like, why not? Why wouldn't you use a challenge? Uh, of course, it probably wouldn't like be musically related, uh, but it, it means like something that requires your ears, but could have been like finding sheet music or something. Ends up just being a rat info. Moving on. Yeah. Beautiful music, though. Yeah. She was killing that. I wonder how long she, I wonder if like she's just playing all day or, or more likely production just tells her, okay, teams will come and start playing. But it'd be mm-hmm. it's a funny mm-hmm. thought of her like playing the same song for eight hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if that was like a piece she was working on. She was like, all right, I'm, this is going to be my rehearsal for today. I'm just going like, <laughs> to practice. <this." laughs> exactly. Yeah. But we end up getting the clue. Take, it says we need to take the subway, which is awesome. Very familiar with subways. So we, you know, can read a subway map, know the cadence of them, know what it looks like. <laughs> and like Steve and Anna Lee, which is pretty funny to watch. I, I, yeah, I think Steven said he had never been on a subway before, which is, again, just like, just, I mean, the race just taking people from different backgrounds and different experiences that that is so common to us yeah like i would love to have seen how they did with the hay challenge because like i said like we can't do hay but we mm-hmm. can do subway. i'm sure they're the opposite like they could have been slugging that hay on that barrel or whatever yeah. they're called we we do take the uh train we get to the solemn central station where the clue is and we see both rob and corey and Stephen and lee we're like, let's go. We are like in this. We are absolutely in this. We don't know what they picked detour wise, but we know that they're kind of traveling together. So they're a pack probably like we'll either beat them or be behind both of them at the same time. And um, we find the clue box. We choose serve. We choose serve. Which was part of our, we had seen, Johnny and I had watched so many seasons mm-hmm. prior. Um, we saw one of those challenges prior except i think it was in china where they needed to do the exact same challenge and because we had seen that episode we knew exactly what to do like we had seen this challenge before we knew that the best way to do it was just to yeah kind of like how johnny said uh at some point use it as kind of like airport codes where we only put the first word or the last word and then kind of just use it that way so because we had prior knowledge I don't even know if we looked at our list, like our list of rankings during that time. We just knew that, so. okay, we know how to do this challenge. We got to go for it. Yeah, I think we just went for it. And we really bodied that challenge, even though I think for most people, the sort would have been faster. But I think we had a lot of fun. We didn't use a lot of physical energy in case something else came up. And also just had it privately to ourselves. I'm sure production was elated that we gave them like camera footage of all of those plates that they made. They made so many plates. I don't think that food was edible, but it was a good amount of that effort. That food was yeah. definitely edible. That food you was so it edible. looked like glaze. It looked like it was like real food that had been like preserved in some way. Oh, maybe. It could have been props. It could have been mm-hmm. props. Yeah, and it didn't smell like fish and chicken mm-hmm. like the room didn't if for all that food it would have smelled like something wow maybe it was props yeah. everyone was telling me how it looked really good and how if i got to eat any of it and i had to <laughs> if i was able to smell it i definitely would have taken just a little bit of the plates that we knew weren't going to be used but maybe we would have gotten a penalty that would suck phil however you <laughs> ate a bite of that salmon that another team was supposed to use so two worth hours it. worth it <laughs> <laughs> i also loved how serious you took the serving aspect of it. <laughs> Enjoy your meal. Well, how are you all tonight? Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. That was that was fun to watch. I didn't know you got that much into the role. Oh yeah, it was fun to watch, fun to do, and they even like started bantering back with me. So um, yeah, it, it, it was great. Like you got to take those moments of the race. That's what you got to do. Yeah, especially for it being in Sweden. That would have I would have never guessed. Definitely was mm-hmm. expecting some Swedish words. But seeing it was in yeah. French was great because you you know you take some French, I know French. So that I mean I don't know if that helped us a crazy amount. Like maybe it would have helped you because you said a word and I knew how to spell that word. I think that's the mm-hmm. only thing. But we'll never yeah. know. We have nothing to compare it to. I don't know if we did really well or if we did like average. Yeah, and then also like you can see a word and you know it means rabbit, so you know you're looking for meat. So that kind of stuff helps too. Yeah. But we end up getting out of there and head to a boat. I, I just hid in the boat and again, just another route info telling us to go to the pit stop, which was really exciting because we saw again, Rob and Corey and Steve and Emily. Now, when you see another team and you're heading to the pit stop, it oh, makes no. the most sense to follow that team. If you know you can beat them in a foot race, because that guarantees you can get lost for days. As long as you are confined by the hit that guarantees you can beat them at the last second. So I don't regret us following what I do regret 
is not prompting them to say where they got the directions. Just ask the simple question. Did you look at Google Maps? Did you look at a map? Because it seems like Rob and Corey just kind of asked the taxi. Taxi said this way. And they said up a hill, nice hike. That's it. And so I would have liked to get a bit more information. Even as we were getting lost, we should have just asked the person for Google Maps because we didn't see Google Maps until literally we we were done getting lost at that point. <laughs> it, it, it was what it was. If, if we literally just had went the opposite direction, we would have probably came first that round. But that's fine. That's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're still in it. Uh, props to Joel and Garrett. They they got that first dub, which was fun to watch on, on TV. And then also like fun to see us all kind of stockpiling on top of each other at the map. And to have like the final four just like left and right of us is always an honor. Honor and a privilege. When we were on our way to the pit stop, and Ali especially, and Rob and Corey were just nervous about being eliminated. Like the whole time we're just kind of like, okay, when we get out here, we have to make it, we have to push it. When I think you and I were telling them like, you're good. This is Todd and Ashley's day. They're far enough behind. Granted, we knew that we could beat them in a foot race. So it wasn't too much uh, pressure on us, but I think there was an um, amount of peace that no one had seen Todd and Ashley in either of those detours. Well, they were exactly. If if Todd and Ashley were already at the mat, they probably would have gone right, just because they had they had mm -hmm. people that could beat them in a foot race. But I would probably be in that same mindset if I were them. Like it's hard to get out of that "what was me" mindset when you're when you're kind of low down there like that. But we were luckily in the situation where we kind of were a little bit more level headed because we weren't too worried about being eliminated, and so we were able to think logically, and we were just telling mm -hmm. her okay, logically, Todd and Ashley are not going to be at the mat. Like, and that was genuine. And we were right, but that was a genuine, like, uh, trying to help them out. Yeah. Yeah, just trying to help we them even, out. Honestly, we even thought Joel and Garrett weren't going to be there. We were like, no, there's yeah. no way. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. It was a tighter race than we thought, just a as a whole. I, I think it, it was a semi-semi-linear, like, with all of those route infos, and people did well at the challenges. But... The cards unfolded the way they did, and we got a final four. We got Rob and Corey, Stephen and Annalie, Joel and Garrett, and yours truly, Greg and John. And we're going to see you next week in Ireland, which um, I've been to. Have you been to Ireland? I mean, I have with the race, but not prior to that. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do some swimming, going to do some dancing, uh, going to do some hurling. Should be, Should be good. Think. Should be good. All right, we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. And here's to another great week of racing.